ولا عاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله سيد ولد آدم أجمعين صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين على مر الأيام والليالي والشهود والسنين أما بعد We continue 708 Friday May the 3rd 2019 p.m. which now is the 27th of Sha'ban and which is only a couple of days remaining until the month of Ramadan starts. So we say in regards to what is left of this month, of the month of Sha'ban, we continue in preparation for the month of Ramadan as we continue the chapter of the Kitab, the chapter of fasting. Bulugh al-Maram by the great illustrious Imam Ahmed bin Ali ibn Hajj al-Asqalani who died 852 after the Hijrah of Mustafa alayhi salatu salam. If you notice in the narration where we continue, uh, here it is. If everyone looks in their books, you'll find the narration in the authority of Jab ibn Abdullah. As we, if you, when everyone looks in their book in Bulugh al-Maram, You'll find the narration of first where we stopped at was the narration as it says, Man dhara'ahu al-qay fala qada alayh. No, we're supposed to be looking at Bulugh al-Maram. By Al-Hafid ibn Hajr al-Asqalani. The book is called Bulugh al-Maram, the Kitab al-Siyam. I've been doing this book for a minute, brothers and brothers. You have your Bulugh al-Maram, Jamar? You have your Bulugh? Oh, you have it on your PDF. I'll share with the brothers in the book, if you can, if you can share with one of the brothers. You have your Bulugh, uh, Jafar? It's on your PDF on your phone. Just share for now, because it's too much to download it now. We have to go, we have to stuff to speak, that stuff to speak about. Tayyip, if you look in Bulugh al-Maram, everyone, if you notice in the narration it says, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من ذرعه القيء فلا قضاء عليه ومن استقاء فعليه القضاء that who was ever overtaken by the feeling or as if one was to vomit then there's no expiation upon him oh, excuse me, he does not have to make it up nor is there any expiation upon him but however, if he was to be the reason for himself to vomit, then he will have to make up that fast. <coughs> You'll find that it mentions here, رواه الخمسة وأعله أحمد وقواه الدار القطني. In which this narration, the actual meaning of it is correct. As it says that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said of what, or one of the ways for one to break one's fast, is that he would vomit, meaning that he would throw up, or what they call it, istifraq ma fi al batn, that which comes up from the stomach when one feels a nauseating feeling, or when they say what they call maghs, who feels a little bit queasy in his stomach or sickness, then one vomits. During the month of Ramadan, we just took from last class. That one breaking his fast breaks down to two categories. What you enter in the body, excuse me, I'm sorry everyone, if you want to say, was pertaining to mufattirat al hissiyah and mufattirat al ma'nawiyah. You have what, that which breaks the fast, which is hissi, meaning what is done with the body limbs or what is entered in the body <coughs> of those things that one consumes or what is the meaning of food and drink as we talked about. We also said that there's another type of affair that breaks one's fast, and we said, which is called Mufatirat Ma'nawiyah, meaning those intangible 
affairs that breaks one's fast, such as backbiting or evil actions or looking at something haram or doing an act that is unlawful or prohibited. That will diminish the reward on one's siyam until as if he did not fast. Right. What we were also discussing from last class, if everyone looks in the Bulugh and Maram, you'll find we also spoke about how those matters that will break one's fast was considered from what is entered in the body and was also removed from the body. So we talked about last class about things that are entered in the body that will break the fast. And that's clear. As far as eating or drinking or what is in the meaning, the meaning of food and drink from injections or what one injects in his bloodstream that will give nutrients to the body whereas it would suffice for food and drink or take the place of food and drink. That's clear. <clears throat> However, there are certain matters that will break one's fast from it exiting the body. From those of what we mentioned, such as blood, and what if it's done intentionally. If it's a lot of blood or copious amounts of blood that's removed from the body intentionally, then it will likewise break, break one's fast. Similar to that, likewise, similar to that, is if one ejaculates semen intentionally. That also will break one's fast. Another example is the hadith that we're taking here. For example, for one, was to also what? To vomit on purpose. What do they mean on purpose? Meaning that you take your finger, stick it in the back of your throat, and you're the person that caused, you're the one that caused yourself to vomit. That breaks the fast. However, if it was done unintentionally, if one feels sick, as we discussed, and he was walking down the street and he smelled a very, very repugnant smell, that caused him to feel some type of what? queasiness in his stomach. He feels sick in his stomach. He smells something that was unpleasant. And as a result of it, he, what? he vomited. Does he have to break the fast? We said no. Why? Because it was not, it wasn't intentional. That's the reason why it says in the, in the narration of your book, if you look at it, it says, Man That's the Quran, Shaykh. That's not Bulugh al Maram, is it? What says that? Does he have, see if he has the right number of the hadith? See if he has the right number. That's why the message of Allah Sallallahu clearly said, "Man dara'ahu al-qay fala qada alayh." Whoever is over, <coughs> overtaken, whereas he he unintentionally vomited, meaning it wasn't his in his control. For verily, he does not have to what make up his fast meaning. He can continue. If one was to vomit in the day of Ramadan, and during the day, like we said, he smelled something unpleasant, or he felt sick to the point where he vomited, that person could continue his fast, and he does not have to make it up, due to the fact, like we said, it was unintentional. So that's the reason why it says clearly in the hadith, for verily he does not have to make it up. <coughs> he does not have to make it up. Because it was not what intentional. However, مَمِنْ اسْتَقَاءَ فَعَلَيْهِ الْقَضَاءَ. However, if he what, if he does it on purpose, he's the reason that caused it. Then that person has to what make up their fast. طيب. If you look in the next hadith, if you look in your books, everyone it says, on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah رضي الله عنه, it says. That the Mas and the Rasulullah Sallam Kharaja Amal Fatih in a Makata Vi Ramadan. For Sama Hatta Bella Kura al Ramim. For Sama Nas the Madaa be Kadahin, Minma in for Rafa Ahu Hatta Nadar and Nasuile, Thuma Sharib, for Kila Lahu Batadalik, and the Batan Nas Katsa, for Kala Ula Ikal Rusa, Ula Ikal Rusa. If he loved for Kila Lahu, and the Batan Nas Pashaka Alehus Siam. وإنما ينتظرون فيما فعلت فدعا بقدح من ماء بعد العصر في الشرب رواه مسلم. 
Now you'll find this next narration Kitab al-Siyam on the authority Jab ibn Abdullah says that the message of Allah alayhi salatu salam that he left during the he left during the Am al-Fatih during the conquest of Mecca with the year of the conquest of Mecca in the month of Ramadan in the month of Ramadan That during the year of the, of the conquest of Mecca, the message of Allah left out, meaning he set out for that expedition and he was traveling. And then the message of Allah set out for this tremendous matter, meaning the conquest of Mecca during the month of Ramadan. Until he reached a place called Al Ghamim. Balagha Qura' Al Ghamim. He placed him, reached a place that was called Ghamim. It says, and the people were fasting. Then the message of Allah called for a container. A container which had in it water. And he raised it and the people were looking at him until he drank. Meaning he broke his fast. It was said to him, verily there are some people who continue to fast. The message of Allah said, they are disobedient. They are disobedient. And then another narration says, Verily, inna ba'tun nas qad shaqqa ilayhim al-siyam, wa inna ma yantadhiruna fi ma fa'alta, fada'a bi qadahin min ma ba'd al-asr, fashadib, to the end of it. He said, for fi love, in another wording, it was said, Verily, some of the people, it's become difficult upon them, fasting. And verily, they are waiting for what? For what? They are waiting to see what you will do. So the Messenger of Allah called for that container of water after Asr, and he drank from the container. And this narration is in, in Muslim. طيب. Continue to read the next hadith. If you look to the next one, everyone, because we're going to read them all together. So we keep everything at the same time. Uh, it says, O oh, Messenger of Allah, on the authority of Hamza ibn Amr al-Aslami أَنَّهُ قَالَ يَا رَسُلَ اللَّهِ أَجِدُ بِي قُوَّةً عَلَى الصِّيَامِ فِي السَّفَرِ فَهَلَ عَلَيَ جُنَاحِ فَقَالَ رَسُلُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ هِيَ رُخْصَةُ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَمَنْ أَخَذَ بِهَا فَحَسَنْ وَمَنْ أَحَبَّ أَنْ يَصُومْ فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْهِ that I find within myself the ability and the strength to fast during travel, during my travel. Is there any sin upon me, me in the month of Ramadan? The message of Allah Sallallahu said, it is a ruqsa, meaning it is a what? legislated excuse for one to not fast. Meaning it was that license or that legitimate legislative excuse from Allah that he's given you, for you not to fast. And whoever accepts it, then it's good. And whoever wants to fast, then there's no sin upon him. So that's in Sahih Muslim. If you turn the page and look to the next narration, it says, وَالْأَصْلُهُ فِي الْمُتَّفِقْ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ حَدِيثِ عَائِشَةِ أَنَّ حَمْزَ بْنَ عَمْرِ سَأَلْ That Hamza bin Amr is the one that actually what? Acts. The origin of these narrations, brothers, you'll find is that in the month of Ramadan, as we know, it's coming upon one to fast for who has witnessed the moon and he's muqim, sahih, and he's in his local residence, he's not sick, he has the ability, he's Muslim, that it's obligatory for one to fast the month of Ramadan. طيب. So now we're going to speak about what is permissible about during one's travels? Is it permissible now for one to break his fast and not fast during his travels or not? So a person said that it is permissible for one to break his fast while he's traveling. The proof of that is here, and what we're discussing in this narration here. Gee. 
That's what we're going to discuss this year, brother. Oh, uh, right now. And I'm going to bring some other narrations that's not in Bulugh al Maram. And I'm going to tie it all in together. Fine. So this is the origin of the asl to show if one is traveling, then he does not have to what? Fast. If he is traveling. You'll find that this narration is clear. The message of Allah, not only did he fast or broke his fast, this narration, you'll find that he started his fast before the travel. In the month of Ramadan, and in the midst of his travel, even though he started before his traveling, or before he traveled, meaning he was in his locale, he was in his local place of residence. Started his fast, and then he traveled. Then he broke his fast. It's even to that point. Because a person might say, play, that, this ruler is only for the one who's in his travel. Because there is some there is some aqwal, or statements of Ahl Ilm, which we'll discuss, that they say that the legit or the excuse for one to pardon himself from fasting during the month of Ramadan what, in his travels is only for the one that's in the travel. Not for the one who might have started in his in his local residence. Then he set out. They say it's obligatory for him to what? Complete his fast. Is that correct? We say no. The strongest opinion is, in which we're going to discuss, based upon this evidence, clearly in this hadith, what do you see, everyone? The message of Allah did what? No, no, no. How he started his fast off? How did he start his fast? How did he start his fast? He started it in his local residence before he traveled. He started in his local residence before he traveled. When he started in his local residence and he traveled, when he set out, he then broke his fast. So he was not in the actual travel all along while he was fasting. Meaning, he started when he was in his locale or in his residence, then when he set out in his travels, then after Asr, it was before what? Maghrib. Because we know one time to break his fast is when everyone? The time of Maghrib. So it's a lot of benefits with this hadith. Number one is, the message of Allah was in his locale. He was in his residence. Then he started his, he started his fast while he was in his residence. Then he set out in his travel. When he set out in his travel, when he's in the actual travel itself, because the reason why I'm saying this, when the message of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, seeing it was a difficulty upon the people, and the time was after Asr, he called for the container, and he drank from it. And he did it in front of the people. So he didn't wait to not, he didn't even wait until the sun went down. It was right at the Asr. So that shows that the strongest opinion, which we'll discuss, is what? It does not have to be a condition where you have to be in your travels. For example, I'm already in my travel two or three or four or five days. For example, let's, let's, bring, a, let's bring now uh, a modern day, uh, modern day example of what we want to make applicable. For example, one is a truck driver. Because a lot of people ask me this question all the time. You're a truck driver. You're in the road two weeks at a time. You're in different states, traveling, passing by different cities, or what have you. You're in the month of Ramadan. Type. Based upon what we're discussing now, will you find that it was mentioned that when one's travels, he's already in his travel. He left his old locale. Okay, Ramadan started. Ramadan started, he's still traveling. Does he have to fast? Does he have to fast? He's traveling? He's traveling. He's, he's a local. He's, let's say your, lo your locale, your residence is Delaware. You're in Delaware. First and foremost, we want to say that it's not permissible for one to start his month of Ramadan what they call, with the intention of escaping your obligations. Meaning, because we know Allah laid this down as a reason for you to what? Not fast. If he wants to travel, right everyone? You'll find there are people out there that will say, Ramadan's going to start, let's go travel. With the intention to escape what? The obligation. This right here is what? This right here is what you call, what Ahl Im saying, that is what they call Tatib Ruchas. Trying to find an escape in order to what? Not perform your duties. That is who's condemned and dispraiseworthy not to do. That's number one. But let's just say this is a person's job. That's not his intention. 
this is what I do. On a, on, this is what I do constantly. I deliver, I, I travel to certain states, cities, to deliver packages. Ramadan starts while he's in his travels. Let's just say the travel is difficult upon him. Because he has to <coughs> he has to get some sleep or whatever. It's a little bit difficult. <coughs> Ahl al from the statement what I'm saying now, they say, he's already in the travel. He's been left his locale for some days now. He's in it. The month of Ramadan starts, he is the only one that can what, leave off fasting because he was already in the travel. But as for the person who started off in his local residence, and then he started traveling, it's not permissible for him to what? To break his fast. We say, in both instances, you still can what? Break your fast. It doesn't matter. The only thing is, as long as you're in the state of being a traveler, you cannot break the fast as long as you're in your what? Residence at all. If you're in your state or you're in your home residence, it's not permissible for you to what? Break your fast until you're in the actual what? Travel itself. You left out the city, you left out, and you're now in your travels. That's when the actual rukhsa or the legitimate excuse to part yourself from fasting starts. In both states, it doesn't matter whether you're in your travels already, or you started from your local residence, then you started traveling. The rukhsa of what we're discussing now is for both instances. Is it clear what I'm saying? The proof of that is here in this hadith, if you look in your books. It says that the message of Allah left out during the year of the conquest of Mecca, in Ramadan, he fasted until he reached a place called the end of Ghamim. Kura'ah. Kura'ah min al It was a place called Ghamim. The people were fasting. Meaning they started their fast when everyone? When did they start their fast? When did they start it? They started it in their, lo- in their, in their locale or in their residence. Meaning before they left out the city or they left out of their uh, place of residence. The message of Allah called for a container because he seen that it was a difficulty upon the people fasting. Is it clear what I'm saying? It was a difficulty upon him. So he called for a container, he raised it. Looked to the people, he drank from the container. It was said to them, verily there are people who are still continuing their fast. The message of Allah Wasallam said, they are disobedient, they are disobedient. Ula'ika al-usa, ula'ika al-usa. They are disobedient. They are disobedient. And in another narration, it was said to them, Verily, some of the people has become difficult upon them fasting. So in this instance, the message of Allah called for the container, and then he what? Did, what did he do, everyone, after that? He drank from the container. All of this is to show and legislate to clear as the sun in the sky, without any shadow of a doubt, without any ikhtilaf. We have a evidence from Kitab and Sunnah showing that the message of Allah was in his travels and he was in the month of Ramadan and he broke his fast especially during the time where it was uh, uh, especially when it was a difficulty upon the people so that's what we're discussing now and now I'm going to bring all the narrations because there are others so we have firstly this narration which is in your books on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah so hold on to that there's another narration and I want everyone to listen to this it's another narration. <clears throat> There's another narration on the authority of Jabir ibn Abdullah. It says, كان النبي صلى الله في السفر فرأى رجلا قد اجتمع الناس عليه وقد ظلل عليه فقال ما له قالوا رجل صائم فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ليس البر أن تصوم في السفر. Listen to this, everyone. I want everyone to listen to this part. That the Messenger of Allah was traveling and he seen a man, he seen a man and the people were gathering around him. He passed out basically. And the people were giving him shade. Fadhalla fadhulli la alayhi. They was giving him some type of shade, I guess, to, to what? To try to aid him. Give him some type of, uh, some type of relief. But at any rate, it says, فَقَالَ مَا لَهُ What's wrong with him? They said, he's a man fasting. So the message of Allah said, it is not from righteousness to fast in traveling. <laughs> it's not from righteousness. لَيْسَ bir and تَصُومُ fi safar. Your book is in the office. 
It's in the office on the shelf, on the right side. Not your book. Oh, his book. Oh. Fine. So you have this narration. So now, the first narration, if you look in your book, the message of Allah fasted, and he was traveling. He fasted, and he was traveling. He started his fasting in his locale. Pay attention, everyone. Hold on. We got plenty of chairs. The message of Allah, so he said, if you notice in your books, you know where we are? Which number are we on? Five. The message of Allah started his fast in his locale, in his residence. When he was in the travel and he seen it was a difficulty, he broke it. Especially when it's a difficulty upon him. His followers upon the Sahaba. Five. Here in this narration, it says it is not from righteousness to fast while one is traveling at all. But the message of Allah in this narration did what? He traveled. He was fasting and he was traveling. Seemed like there's some contradictions. There isn't any. We're going to discuss this, inshallah. You have another narration where it says, Wa alaykum bi allati lakum. It says there's another narration after he said it is not from birr, from righteousness or from piety to fast while one is traveling. So listen. I want everyone to listen to this. Then the message of Allah gave something extra. In the same narration he said he says it's upon you to take the rukhsah, the legislative excuse to part yourself in which Allah has given you. Ah. So in the hadith, which is in Sahih Muslim, did the message of Allah take the rukhsah? He didn't. He was still traveling. He didn't take it until he seen what? The difficulty. So you have this narration saying that the man passed out while he was traveling, while he was fasting, he was traveling, and he said it is not from piety that one fast. Type. <laughs> so now we have this narration. طيب, there's another narration. It says, "And the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam في ظل في ظل شجرة يرشل يرشه عليه الماء. فقال ما بال صاحبكم؟ قالوا يا رسول الله صائم. قال إنه ليس من البر أن تصوم في السفر وعليك برخصة الله التي رخص لكم فقبلوها." Tandem. There's another narration that says, and this is narration is just like the one I just. Mentioned, but this is in Nasai. All these are authentic. At the message of Allah passed by a man, he was in the, the shade of a tree. And they were, they were sprinkling water on him. They were sprinkling water on him. He said, what's wrong with your companion? What's wrong with him? Why is he passed out and why are you sprinkling water on him? He said, the message of Allah, he's fasting. He said, it is not from birr. It's not from piety. For one to fast while traveling, one should take the rukhsah of Allah in which he is giving you. Accept it. Take it. Uh. <laughs> so, you find here in this narration the message of Allah said, take the rukhsah. Meaning the legislative excuse that Allah has given you to part yourself from a t- particular obligation because of a circumstance. Which we'll talk about, inshallah. Five. <laughs> so this narration shows that is what is condemned for one to what fast while he's traveling. That's what you would think, right, everyone? Is it clear? Or is it not clear? Thought so. You also we also have the narration which says on the authority Ibn Umar, "In Allah Tabarak wa Taala, yuhibu an tu ta ruhasuhu, kama yakrah an tu ta maasiyatu." This is not, and this is also authentic. Verily, Allah loves that one that He takes His ruchas, meaning those legislative excuses that Allah will give you to pardon yourself from a certain obligation, or to make it lighter upon you, or to leave it off altogether in certain circumstances, of which I'll talk about, inshallah. Here, as we know, the ruchsa in traveling. Is legislated for one to what? Combine his prayers, 
shorten them into also what? Break his fast. So when a person is traveling, he can pray, as we know, Zuhur and also together, and shorten them. He does not have to make them four and four. While he's traveling, he can make Zuhur two, two rak'ats, also two. And he can combine them in the time, also he can pray also in the time of what? Zuhur and Zuhur in the time of Asr. That's a rukhsa. So, certain things was left off. Two rakats was dropped from each prayer. From Dhuhr and what? Asr. Totally left off. Also, a person now does not have to wait for the time where that's an obligation. As we know, if you're a resident, you have to wait for the time of Asr to pray in its time in order for the prayer to be what? Valid and acceptable. Right or wrong? You can't pray Asr outside of its time. Until it comes in. So now, when a person is traveling, he can pray also in the time of what? Dhuhr. And he can pray Dhuhr in the time of what? Asr. So that obligation has been left off likewise. Praying a salah and in a specific what? Time. Right or wrong? <laughs> Tayyip. What's also an obligation? When one has the choice based upon this narration, what do you understand from this, everyone? That the message of Allah Wasallam said, Verily Allah loves that you take his rukhas. His legislated rukhas, meaning those legislated matters that Allah gives you to part yourself from certain instances. Such as traveling, which allows you now to either, like we said, based upon what we just mentioned, of course, gather between the prayers, shorten them. And in the month of Ramadan, he can leave off fasting. And it's, listen to what I'm saying. Especially if the fast is a difficulty upon him. And if it's a difficulty upon him, then one should what? Take the rukhsa, break your fast. Even if it's the month of Ramadan, while you are traveling. In the case, especially if it's a difficulty. Taib, so why, what do we say about this narration, which is a sahih Muslim? What do we say? Because the message of Allah didn't take the rukhsa. The Messenger of Allah did not take the rukhsa, did he? The first narration in your shab, did he take the rukhsa or not? He didn't. We'll discuss this in a couple of minutes. We'll get the answer to this. Tayyip. On the authority of Anas ibn Malik, this is not in your books. It says, Kunna ma'in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fi safar, fa minna sa'im. I want everyone to listen, listen attentively to this. On the authority of Anas, Kunna ma'in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fi safari, fa minna sa'im. ومن المفطر فقال قال فنزلنا منزلا في يوم حار أكثرنا أكثرنا ظلا صاحب الكساء ومنا من يتقي الشمس بيده قال فسقط الصوام وقام المفطرون فضربوا الأبنية وسقوا الركاة فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذهب المفطرون اليوم بالأجر مسترس نيريش <تصفيق> On the authority of Anas ibn Malik. He says, we were with the message of Allah in a travel. There was some, there was from amongst us who was traveling. There were amongst us who broke their fast. We came and descended upon a place in a very hot day. He said there were people that were trying, I guess, fan themselves or use their cloth or their clothes or their garments or what have you as some type of shade. He says, and from us who was trying to use our hands and protect ourselves from the rays of the sun with our hands. He said the people who are fasting fell out. And those who were what? Who broke their fast, they stood up for Dharabul Ebniyah. He says they brought some structures or something of those tents to put over them or to cover them or to what? Save them or give them some type of comfort or, or rescue. He says, and they gave them drink. Listen to what the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Those who broke their fast on this particular day took all the reward. ذهب المفطرون اليوم بالأجر Those who broke their fast today Went off with the reward. <laughs> so based upon this narration, one would think what, everyone? 
That while he's fasting the month of Ramadan, he should what? He should not fast. That's what you want to understand, right? Is that what you want to understand? Camden? Ha! Ah. However, here in this narration, what do you notice? There was a difficulty. Just listen. There was a hardship. So here in this instance, the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, oh, excuse me, the companions of the message of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not fast. Even though it's the month, the Ramadan, and they were what? Traveling. They did not find any, or, or they, some of them found difficulty to some of them to the point they passed out. They said it was a very, very what? Hot day. It was difficult. So some of them even what? Passed out. Until it was coming upon those who had not fast, they gave rescue to what? Those who passed out. Rescued them, gave them relief, or what have you. Tayyip. Here in this instance, you would think, like we said, a person would, would say that a person should not what? Fast while he or she is in their travels. Now listen to this narration. <laughs> I'm going to bring something else. All these are authentic. So no one say, oh, that's da'if. No, all of them are authentic when I mention it. There's another narration of the Sa'id Abu Sa'id al-Khuddari. قال غزونا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لستة عشر مضت من رمضان. فَمِنَّا مَنْ صَامْ وَمِنَّا مَنْ أَفْطَرْ فَلَمْ يَعِبْ الصَّائِمُ عَلَى الْمُفْطِرْ وَلَا الْمُفْطِرْ عَلَى الصَّائِمْ يَرَوْنَا أَنَّ مَنْ وَجَدَ قُوَّةً فَصَامْ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ حَسَنْ وَيَرَوْنَا أَنَّ مَنْ وَجَدَ ضَعْفًا فَأَفْطَرْ فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ حَسَنْ So now we say in another narration We set out on an expedition with the Messenger of Allah he said, "The sitta ta ashra madat min Ramadan. Sixteen days already elapsed during the month of Ramadan." Then he goes on to say, "From amongst us who are fasting, and from amongst us who are not fasting, and those who are fasting did not ridicule or mock or talk or speak ill of those who broke their fast or who are not fasting." Excuse me. Nor those who were not fasting, did not ridicule or mock those who are what? Fasting. And in another narration it says, they seen, meaning the sahaba, the companions of the message of Allah, that whoever had the strength, the capability to fast, for verily they will find that to be what? To be good. And whoever was weak and they found weakness in themselves and it was a difficulty, then they were what? Break the fast. For verily that was also considered what? Considered good. Taib, <laughs> what do we say in this regard now, everyone? And I'm going to bring what the great Imam al Hafid ibn Hajar, who's the author of this book, Balugh al Maram, what he says in this. Just listen. Ikhtalaf al Ulama, ayyuhuma afdal fi safar. الصوم أو الفطر فذهب أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه إلى أن الصوم أفضل وحكي ذلك عن عثمان بن أبي العاص وإليه ذهب إبراهيم النخعي والسعيد بن جبير I'll just read it quickly الحافظ بن حجر he said that the ulama differ which one is more virtuous in traveling is it fasting or not fasting أنس بن مالك the great sahabi says that fasting is more what more, more virtuous. It's afdal, it's better, it's preferable. He says, and that's been related upon Uthman ibn Abil Aus, and also from the great Tabi'een, from the great of the heads of the Tabi'een, KB, Ibrahim al Nakhai, with Sa'id ibn Jubair, with Thodi, Sufyan al Thodi, and, and Ashab al Ra'i, with Qala Malik. So you have some tremendous, huge names. So Ibrahim al Nakhai was Sa'id ibn Jubair, and the great Imam Sufyan al Thawri, and Abu Thawr, all said that it's more preferable than one what? Fast while the travel. However, Imam Malik, and Fudayl ibn Iyad, and the great Imam al Shafi'i, they say, Assalam, Ahabu ilayna liman qawi alayh. That fasting is more beloved to us. 
for the one who has the ability to do so. Meaning he has the strength. وقال عبد الله بن عبد بن العاص وعبد الله بن عباس وسعيد بن جبير. So you guys have that? Are you ready for the twist now? So you have some tremendous names. There's some mountains of knowledge here. You have Ibrahim and Akhay. You got Anas ibn Malik. You have Ibrahim and Akhay. You have Sa'id ibn Jubair. You have Imam uh, uh, Sufyan al Thodi, the great Imam. The great Imam Sufyan al Thodi. The great Imam Abu Thawr. All said that what's more pre- pre- is preferably is what is better? Which one is better? Fasting. Now we're going to throw a curveball. Also Malik, Imam Malik, and the great Imam Fudayl ibn Iyad, and also the Imam al-Shafi'i. They say that fasting is, is more beloved to me for the one who has the ability. I'm about to throw a curveball. <laughs> now listen to this one. Abdullah ibn Abd al-Aws, another great Sahabi. The Abdullah ibn Abbas. Was <laughs> Sa'id ibn Musayyib. These are mountains of knowledge. With the great Imam Shabi, who's Amr ibn Sharahi al Shabi. The great Imam al Awza'i, Abdurrahman ibn Amr al Awza'i, the Imam Ahl al Sham. And the great Imam of Ahl al Sunnah, Ahmed ibn Hanbal al Shaybani. And Ishaq ibn Rahawi. They say that not fasting is more virtuous. <laughs> While one is traveling. That's some huge names there. That's some huge names. They say al fitr afdal. That's some major names right there. He said, "Waruya an Amr ibn and and it was also mentioned from the great Imam Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the great Khalifa, rahimahullah rahmatu wasiya." And from the great Aimma, Qatar of the Amas Sadusi wa Mujahid, Mujahid, Ibn Muzahim, they say, now listen to what it is. Afdaluhuma e sarahuma ala al mar. They say that what is more preferable is what's easiest upon the person. Al Hafib ibn Hajar goes on to say, and ended up by saying, and also the great Imam al Albani. Also agrees where he says, "Waqtara هذا القول." This statement where we just left off by saying, "What's more preferable is what is easiest upon the person." And the one who chose this statement was the great Imam Al Hafa Abu Bakr Ibn Al Munzir, and he said, "And that is a good position. That's a good statement." Which is what? What is ever easiest upon a person? Then that is what one should what. He should do. Is it clear? I'll read what the great Imam Al Albani says. Rahimahullah. The great Imam Muhammad Al Sadin Al Albani, who some people out there do not like to quote his name or quote any scholars' names in their lectures because the scholars are too busy drinking their tea and dates. And they don't know the plight of the black man in them here in America, which is stupid, stupid, most pathetic, ignorant statements I've heard. And you can tell that their whole goal behind this is to, is to remove the scholars, remove the scholars to which we're supposed to refer our affairs back to and take it back to them. That's your whole goal. No more, no less. Your statement is like the statements of the deviants of the past. Saying that the scholars don't know, the, they don't have fiqh al waqi'. They don't have fiqh of the reality was taking place in certain countries. They're just ulama of hayd wal nifas wal khirqa. They're just scholars of just knowing what the, the, of the mens and the premenstrual or postnatal bleeding of women. That's it. Which is the same thing of what happened with Amr ibn Ubaid. And also Hassan al-Basri, same thing. They said the exact same thing to flee the people from the ulama so the people could take knowledge from them. Mina Abd ibn Ubaid and, excuse me everyone, Ata ibn, uh, from Amr ibn Ubaid and also Wasi ibn Ata, who was the head of the Mu'tazila, not Hassan al-Basri everyone. 
Wasil ibn Atta and Amr ibn Ubaid. They were the heads of the Mu'tazila and they're the ones who said to the people, don't listen to them. Those scholars, they're only scholars of fiqh in regards to women's mints and menses and a woman's postnatal bleeding. We know the reality of what takes place with the people. It's the same thing. It's the same what? Goal, everyone, but this, this different what? Wording and it's different time and it's just a different cultural race. But the whole goal is the same thing. Take the people away from the true scholars and take us as your scholars. <laughs> you hear, you understand everyone? The goal is one and it's clear. So we say in this regard and we don't find it, any disdain of mentioning the great Imam al Albani. Well, the great Imam al Albani, he says, قُلْتُ وَلَقَدْ صَدَقَ رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهُ أَفْضَلَهُمَا أَيْسَرَهُمَا والناس تختلف تختلف طاقاتهم وظروفهم فليأخذ كل منهم بما هو أيسر له ولذلك صح عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لما سئل أنه قال لمن سأل عن الصوم في السفر صم إن شد وأفطر إن شد رواه مسلم وفي طريق آخر صحيح بلف ذلك عليك أيسر فعل فهو مخرج في الصحيحة so the great Imam, he mentions the great Imam al-Albani, Muhammad al-Zabbin al-Albani. He says, indeed, Al-Hafid ibn Hajar has spoken the truth. Which one is preferable is the what's, what's, what's the most easiest upon you. He says, and everyone is different in their abilities and in their circumstances. And let everyone take what is more easy for them. He said, for that reason, he says, there's a narration that has been authenticated upon the Prophet Sallallahu where he said, when the man was asked about fasting during his travels, he said, fast if you want, break your fast if you want. Sum in shit wa aftir in shit. Fast if you will, if you want, and break your fast if you want, if you want. Rahu Muslim. There's another narration that's been authenticated which says, he says, Ay, thalika alayka ay sarufa fa'al. What is upon you, what is facilitated and easy, do it. Ah. So what do we gather from all this, everyone? Is it clear what I'm saying? So, one is while he's on his travels. Alhamdulillah. Look to the last narration in the book. On the authority of Hamza ibn Amr al-Aslami. And this basically gives aid to what, what we just mentioned. He says, The message of Allah, I find with myself the strength to fast during my travels. He says, Is there any sin upon me? He said, It's a rukhsa from Allah. How do you translate rukhsa, everyone? Permission? Yeah. So it's a permission from Allah. They say it's a permission? Permission given by Allah? Yeah, but no problem. For whoever accepts it, then that's good. I think that's better. Allowance. Allowance. I think that's a lot better than just mere permission. Rukhsa is like an allowance. They said it's an allowance from Allah, and whoever accepts it, then it's good. And whoever loves that they fast, then there's no sin upon them. Huh? In the month of Ramadan, you don't have to. It's clear proof. Clears the sun in the sky. All right. All right, everyone, let's skip. I'm going to skip this hadith and return back to it because we because this is about speaking about the elderly woman and the elderly man and also the women who are pregnant. That's going to take away some time from me. Let's skip to the head narration of Abu Huraira because I want to talk about this today. All right, skip everyone. Let's go to the hadith of Abu Hurairah for the man who fell into being what intimate with his spouse during the day of Ramadan. And I'm gonna come. I'm gonna go back to the other. One. So, as far as in traveling, is it clear, everyone, about what one can do while he's traveling? A person would say, "Like, what if I'm on a, on a travel for ten days, fifteen days, twenty days? If you are traveling and you're driving a truck or a tractor trailer, and you're on the road. If you are a traveler, you can what? Break your fast." Especially if it's a difficulty. You are still traveling. But you still have to what? Make up the day. 
after the month of Ramadan is over. As long as you're in your travels, it's permissible for one to what? Break his fast, especially in those difficult what? times, or if it's a difficulty upon him. Doesn't matter whether it's 10, 15, 20, 20 days. He's still a traveler. You're going from California to Tennessee to Miami, all around the country, you are traveling. A person asks me, do I still combine my salat and short them? I say, absolutely. You can still what? Combine between Dhuha and Azar. And combine between what? Maghrib and Al Isha. Maghrib stays the same, but Isha, you can make it what? Two. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? But Maghrib, there is no shortening for Maghrib. Maghrib stays the same. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Fine. For the month of Ramadan, for that person, now he's in his travels, he's on the, on the truck. Does he now have to what? Fast, even though he's traveling? We said, based upon these narrations, it's clear. He does not have to what? Fast, even though it's the month of Ramadan, based upon the ayah. Allah Himself has said it. Which is the Surah Al Baqarah, ayah number 187, all the way up to the other, other page where it says, and Allah mentions it twice. فَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرٍ وَعَلَى الَّذِينِ يُطِيقُونَهُ فِدْيَةٌ طَعَمُ مِسْكِينٍ فَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ وَأَنْ تَصُومُوا خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنْزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنُ هُدًى لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ وَكَرَّ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى الْحُكْمَ مَرَّةً ثَانِيَةً فَمَنْ كَانَ فَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرَ يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ So Allah mentioned it twice. Whoever from amongst you is what? Traveling or sick. Then a day from the days other than the month of Ramadan where you make it up. So Allah has clearly mentioned in the month of Ramadan, He Himself, Tabarakil wa Ta'ala, has said in His book that who's traveling, then they can what? Break their fast. Is it clear, everyone? Jayyid? Right. So let's now start the hadith. I think it's at 8 o'clock, exactly. It just came in. Tafadl Amir. Come on, K, 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 KDB. KDB. Are you with me today? Are you tired? Some of you are traveling. Do you have to fast? But you could, couldn't you? You can or you can't? Or both? If you had the ability, you can fast. And if you don't, then what? You don't have to fast. Say it again. That's not good and correct. That you that you should fast or shouldn't should not should not fast. It's an allowance, not a mercy. Day. That's just what the team is saying. An allowance from Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آتي محمد وصلى الله عليه وسلم محمد هذه وحده. Okay, the next narration that we're going to go now. Well, before I'm going to ask question with Jahid. 
We already took what the great Imam al-Bani mentioned. The great Imam al-Bani said, what is more preferable is what is easy upon a person. He said, the people are all different in their capabilities and their circumstances. Let everyone take what is facilitated for them. He said, due to the narration, it says, when the message of Allah, لِمَنْ سَأَلَهُ عَنِ السَّوْمْ فِي الزَّغَرْ قَالْ سُمْ إِنْ شِتْ وَأَفْطِرْ إِنْ شِتْ He said, when the message of Allah was asked about tra- fasting while traveling, there's a narration that says, fast if you want, or break your fast if you want. رواه مسلم No doubt, we do have narrations of Abdullah ibn Abbas, was <laughs> Sa'id ibn Jubair, and Imam Sa'id ibn Usayyib, excuse me. And also Sha'bi, and Imam Abu Za'i, and Ahmed ibn Hanbal, and the great Imam Ishaq ibn Rahuya, Ishaq ibn Rahuya. He said that breaking one's fast is better. That is a narration. But however, we take what the Messenger of Allah clearly states and said, and what the great Imam al Bani also confirmed, in which he said, what the Messenger of Allah mentioned in the narration, he says, fast if you will, or break your fast if you will. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Taib. Read the next narration of the Uthaya Abu Huraira. Good. Sixty-four? Sixty-four. Oh, okay. Sixty poor people. Oh, I thought you said sixty-four. Sixty poor people. Okay. He said no. He said down meanwhile in Arab. Be Arab. He tell me. Here, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You're right. Go ahead. Jayid. This topic right here is the origin to show that from those affairs that are fasting is, or from those affairs that break your fast, rather these are the most severest ways that one can break his fast in the month of Ramadan, is through intercourse with one's wife or wife with her husband. Girlfriend and boyfriend, that's, some, that's a whole nother level. Of sin. But having intercourse with a girlfriend or boyfriend, oh, wait, in the month of Ramadan, whew, that's something on a whole other level of sin. But just mere something of the merely breaking what's fast with intercourse, as we know, and it's also in its origin before the month of Ramadan started, it's permissible. It's permissible to be intimate with one's. Spouse, who you're married to, not your girlfriend, not your boyfriend, and certainly not the same gender. And certainly not the same gender. In Islam, that is a huge crime. In our religion, our belief, and we say that, not compromising. We're not compromising. We're not saying that out of any type of compromising. We know that boyfriend and being intimate with a girl or woman that's not your wife. For a man to be intimate with his wife, because that's the reason why one of the reasons why the society and the fabric of love and respect has torn down the society because of all the fornication. And all you, you see the effects of it upon children, upon families, upon love and for, for respect for people. It's, it's diminished and dramatically has died down because of all the premarital interactions and, and relationships amongst the people in society. So the mere fabric of love and integrity and respect and morals or morality has tremendously diminished because it's a fear of fornication, and especially on a whole nother level that shaitan has raised the bar of now homosexuality and lesbianism. 
that the bar has been raised. So sex of the same gender, that's a whole other crime. So now you went from fornication, which is a higher level, and then we're raising the bar as the sex with the same gender, which is something unprecedented. Which, like we said here in this country, you'll find that of the, all the nations was destroyed prior in the past, all of them have been gathered here in this country. Why a law destroyed nations of, pa- of the past? Because of certain sins, you'll find that a lot of them have been gathered all at once here. And then people wonder why everything is such in, a, in chaos in disarray and in mass hysteria and everything is so, uh, if you want to say, helter-skelter in this particular time, what you see going on. What they call shadar al madar helter-skelter. So much chaos and disarray, all of it because the fabric of morality has been stripped and destroyed because of these type of crimes. You see it all around you. No one respects life. No one disrespects their children. No one respects families anymore. All because of the what? All because of the likes of these actions. So we say in this regard, in the month of Ramadan, if one was to be was to fast, what is it upon a person if he was to fall into being intimate with his wife? For verily in the month of Ramadan, we know is a sacred day. Or sacred days of, of the of, of, of throughout the month from the beginning to the end. The origin is that jima or intimacy does break one's fast. Right, everyone? It breaks your fast. Before I start, is it permissible to do it when one is traveling? <laughs> is it permissible for one to be intimate while he's traveling with his wife? Is it or isn't it? Ah. What do you say, Camden? I don't care if you're wrong or right. I, I just want you. To, I just want to see you move your brain. Permissible meaning you you can do it. There's no sin upon you. Jade. It is permissible for one to be intimate with their spouse while they are traveling. Yes, it is. Since the affair of fasting has dropped, it's for all the more reason that what. Those things that will break the fast is, even, is, is, is for all the more reason that those affairs are what? Allowed for you. So if the fasting drops, is for all the more reason that what? You can even be intimate with your what? Your wife. And vice versa. Fine. However, if you're not traveling and you're in your residence, and you have no excuse, you're not, st- you're not sick, you're in good health, and you're fasting, here is obligatory. Taib, obligatory to fast, and we know that the days of Ramadan, to leave off fasting, without a legi- uh, to break your fast, and even to leave it off, is from those major sins in the month of Ramadan. Without a legitimate excuse from Kitab and Sunnah. A person will say, what's the narration for that? The narration for that comes in which the great Imam al-Bani also authenticated about the man who, or about the two angels that came to the message of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I think it's in Bazaar, Sahih Ali Imam Al-Bani, other than him. Where he said, he says, he said, "Kuntu fi manamin, fajaani, faatani rajulani, faakhda bi dabai, faataya bi jablan wa'iran, faqala li isad, qala inni la utiqu, qalu sanusahilu lak, fasaidu, hatta ida kuntu fi sawa il jabal." فسمعت الأصوات أصوات شديدة فقلت ما هذه الأصوات قال هؤلاء عواء أهل النار ثم قال انطلق فانطلق بي حتى إذا كنت بقوم معلقين بعراقيبهم مشققة أشداقهم تسير أشداقهم دما فقلت من هؤلاء هؤلاء الذين يفطرون قبل تحلة سومية so the message of Allah, he said, I was in a dream and I came upon a mountain. He said, there was two people who came to me and he took me by my shoulder. It was two angels. And he said, and they said, climb it. He said, I'm not able. He said, we'll facilitate it for you. So then I climbed it. He says, I was in the side of a mountain. He said, I heard screaming and hollering. He said, they are the moaning and the hollering of the peoples being tortured in hell. 
So then he said, and I kept going. Then when I kept going, he said, I seen people being hung upside down by their hamstrings. مُعَلَّقِينِ بِعَرَقِيبِهِمْ مُشَقَّقَةٌ أَشْدَاقُهُمْ Their faces was ripped with blood coming out of it. Blood was coming out of it profusely. And I said, who are these people that's being tortured in this manner? He said, they are the ones who broke their fast before the, before the time had came for them to do so. قَبْلَ التَّحِلَّةِ سَوْمِهِمْ أَعَضَنَ اللَّهُ إِيَّاكُمْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ May Allah keep you and give us refuge and give you refuge from that. For those people who break their fast before it's time, without a legit, legitimate excuse from Kitab and Sunnah, then those people have fell into a major sin. طيب, the only action, brothers and sisters, that necessitates a kafara is intimacy. And when I say it, there's a reason why I'm saying this in this manner. Intimacy where the private part enters the woman. If that happens while you're fasting, not only does it necessitate for you repentance, also it necessitates for you something else, which is an expiation. An expiation, which is in this narration, were you in the bathroom? An expiation. That expiation is what the message of Allah Sallallahu mentioned here. He said, are you able to free a concubine, uh, free a raqaba, free a slave or concubine? He said, no. Are you able to fast two consecutive months? Huh? He said, no. He says, are you able to feed 60 people in, or people who are what? From the indigent or, or, or impoverished or poverty. He said, no. He says, then the message of Allah came with those dates to the end of the narration. Jima' of intercourse is the only sin in which, like we said, it will bring another ruling, which is what, everyone? An expiation. An expiation with that sin. So it's not only upon the person to what? If he breaks his fast in his manner, he has to what? It's upon him four things. Four things. Number one, you broke your fast. Number two, they say that you still have to remain or abstain from food and drink for the rest of the day. As a punishment for you due to the fact that in tahekta hurmat so that you transgress the sacred virtuous time in an illegitimate, illegitimate, unlegislated way that Allah did not make permissible for you. So due to that case, you still have to refrain from food and drink for the rest of the day. Third thing, you also have to what? Some of the say you have to make up the day. And the fourth them, which is the fourth thing is you have to bring forth an expiation. So expiation is the fourth thing. And that's mentioned in the hadith. What's the expiation? Here in this narration. And what I think is what is the best is that a person, or what is the strongest opinion is that a person still have to make that day up after the month of Ramadan, despite of what? Despite of what the great uh, Imma from them is Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah, which I'll discuss in later, later, on, later on, inshallah. And also, what Ibn Hazm mentioned in his book called Muhalla. Ibn Hazm al-Zahiri mentioned in his book called Muhalla that he, the person who fell in this type of sin does not, he does not have to make up the day. He does not have to make up the day because it will not benefit him because he transgressed his fast with something impermissible and something that was tremendous. So the expiation takes the place for that. I'll talk, discuss that later. But at any rate, you'll find the majority of the jamhur of Ahl al-Ilm say he still has to make up that day. You understand everyone? طيب, so we said it's upon him four things. If you break your fast with you being intimate with your wife, you broke your fast. So you committed a major sin because you transgress hurmat al-sawm the sacredness of fasting by something impermissible. Something that was what? Not legislated. Something that was not legislated as an, as an excuse for you to what? Break your fast. Is it clear what I'm saying so far? Fine. So you have to make what? Person will have to make toba. You have to make what? You have to make toba. Thirdly, or third, a person has to what? Refrain from food and drink for the rest of the day. 
And the fourth thing is he has to make alayhi kafara, an expiation. That kafara. Tayyib. Now I'm going to get into certain side affairs. Tayyib. A person now was, with, was fondling with his wife. And he was, let's just say, and I'm bringing true instances here. He was between the legs of his wife and she was, he had his, her clothes on, she had his clothes on until semen was released. Does he have to now perform a kafar or not? Why not? The actual private part did not enter what? The other. However, he still what? He still has to make the day up. Does he have to perform a kafar? No. Even though he still fell into a what? Major sin. Five. What about what they call what they call istimna? And then I'm bringing true re- instances because you have to bring this. Let's be serious, and I'm not joking here. No, no, so no one laugh and say ha ha ha. I'm being serious right now. What about a person who practices what they call masturbation while he's fasting? Does now have the person have to perform an expiation or not? Five. Does he have to perform an expiation? Does he or doesn't he? The, what is correct is he does not. He, if a person masturbates during the month of Ramadan and if sperm is released, he does not have to perform a kafara, but he has to make toba. And he has to make the daya. Do the kafara. Why? Because there was no meeting of the prophet part between who? The male and the female. Once the private part of the male and the female meet, he enters, that's when now he has to perform a what, everyone? An expiation. Is it clear? Is it clear or is it not clear? Five. So now let's talk about pre-seminal discharge. Pre-seminal discharge, does it break the fast or not? We have to pray? No, I'm okay. I was just sniffing. Maybe I'll do my tissue. <laughs> Firstly, before we continue... Masturbation, as we know, is haram. It's muharram, shara, and istimna, muharram. But in Ramadan, is even more what? Even more emphasized. While one is fasting. Alhamdulillah. Let the Quran say, Hubadakum. For the one now, mm. all right, two more minutes and I'll stop. For the one now that does this, he has broke his fast and he is coming upon him now to make toba. Makes toba because he transgressed his fast in tahaka hurmat al toba. وَعَلَيْهِ كَذَلِكَ الْقَضَاءِ بَعْدَ رَمَضَانِ دُونَ كَفَّارَةً وَنَا أَقْصَ بِذَلِكَ الْإِسْتِمْنَاءِ دُونَ الْجِمَاعِ الْجِمَاعِ يلزم عليه أن يقوم بأربعة أشياء عليه التوبة وعليه الامتناع عن الأكل والشبح حتى تغرب الشمس وعليه الكفارة وعليه أن يقضي هذا اليوم الذي أفسده في أيام رمضان so upon him four things for the person who fell into what? Being intimate with his wife. As far as the person, for example, that he was fondling with his wife until semen was released, then we said that person, is it to come upon him expiation or not, everyone? Fondling. I didn't say intercourse. Fondling. It's not, it isn't an expiation. I want everyone to be clear on that. Because I heard people say that, oh, person, his wife, and they were kissing, and he, they were kissing to the point where he released sperm. Say so he has to make a kafara. That's wrong. He doesn't have to make a kafara. Who said that? We should delete. There isn't any. 
What sin coming upon him is to what? It's just to make tawbah. And he has to make that day up at the Ramadan. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Five. What about pre similar discharge of a stop? Is there a difference between medhi and many? Yes, there is. Pre similar discharge. Al al sahih la yuftir al medhi. Pre seminal discharge does not break the fast. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Pre seminal discharge does not break your fast. Sperm and semen does. If it's done in- intentionally and you're the one that caused it to release or someone else. And I hope it's just your wife. Anything beyond that is on a whole other level of sin. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Five. So based upon that, if semen is released, that will break your fire. Why did I say intentionally, everyone? Because if it's unintentional, a person would say, I was unintentional. Because if you have a wet dream, is that intentional or unintentional? Ah. Uh-huh. If you have a wet dream, does it break your fast? No, it doesn't. Why? Because it was what? It was unintentional. Also, what branches, or uh, what they say, what's, uh, what's, what's, what branches under that same matter is from a person that he might be a very strong person with strong desires. He's a youth. And he just thinks about sex for that split second, bang, semen came out. Is it fast done? We, the strongest opinion, no, it doesn't. No. If he's from one of those people that has real strong desires, just as, all it took was a split second for him to think for about two, three seconds, bang, semen came out. Huh? Then that we said that does not what? Break the fast, based upon the fact that we said it was unintentional. Those are from the different tafriyat or the furu'ah or the different types of branches that branches off in this particular matter which we're discussing now. Is it clear, everyone? Fine. However, the only thing that would bring a kafara if intercourse was what? If intercourse was made. And please let it be with I mean, if it's with your wife, of course that's bad during the Ramadan, but it's beyond that, then there's other things that will come up in the play. If it's with your girlfriend, then please don't let it be from the same gender. Because there's a kafara for that too. Yes. Upon was also the correct opinion they are homosexual. Hashal a'adhan Allahu yakum in thalik. And yakun ahadun or wahidun minna yumadis al liwa'at. A'adhan Allahu yakum minhu. For a person, if he practices that, that also necessitates a kafara. And other things. <laughs> you understand everybody? Yes, it does. Because that's some type of intercourse. I'm just being frank. If you do that, that's a major sin in the month of Ramadan. It's upon you for things and others. <laughs> and other things. So that so we're trying to keep it in a manner in which we hope that what is was supposed to be, if it was to happen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not allow it to happen because the this particular thing is a major sin for tra- and violating one's fast by breaking it with intercourse with one's wife. For a girlfriend, whoo, I hope though that no one does that any time of the year, but in Ramadan especially is on a whole nother level. Is it clear what I'm saying, everyone? Is it clear? Jay, we'll stop here. Any, any questions about the class? It's father Camden. Expiation is like something that re- it removes it. It's something you have to perform of a, of an action or compensation or whatever that will be a reason for the removal of this sin. That's all it means. To follow. Um, if you move yourself, if you touch yourself. You're the one that caused it. If you continue and watching and watching and watching and watching, you caused it. Which is a person just said that he just had a little thought, bang. That person is excused. But if you're looking at, at a girl, looking and looking, that you caused it. And if you touch yourself and did any movements, you caused it. That breaks your fat. 
تفضل أصحاب أصحاب الرأي لا أهل رأي أصحاب الرأي الرأي no they were saying that one should what they should fast in their travels so you shouldn't but al Hafid al Hajj gets this between both in which he says just what the Imam al Bari also confirmed he said that what is preferable is what is easy for you. Exactly. If it's like, for example, but you landed or in the plane, in the plane, or if you landed. Mm-hmm. Have a narration that clearly says that we have that what it says it's the ruchas, it's an allowance from Allah. If you take it, it's good. And there's some narration that says the Prophet said, Iqbaluha. Take the allowance from Allah. <laughs> That's the reason why it's so conflicting. What is it? Is it based upon what is in your circumstances? That's why he said it clearly. Based upon what's capability and circumstance. According to your circumstance, then then that's what's, what's preferable. So if you if you broke it, then there's no sin upon you, ultimately. And at the end, if you broke it, there's no sin upon you. We talked about if you notice, they you listen to the ibarat to the words of the ulama. They say afdal, they say awjab, was preferable. You understand? They said afdal, afdal was preferable. That's it. So notice they didn't say what was more obligatory. Or what? No, no, no. Notice they didn't. They totally. Neglected the, 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 the mention of those words. Wujub. That was negated. They were talking about afdaliya. What's preferable? You get what I'm saying? So if you did that and you broke your fast, it wouldn't be no problem. Allah knows best. Last thing, Kendra, to fund up. Mm-hmm. Are you traveling? I'm saying like after he broke his fast, that means that don't mean it's going to extend like by eating so much food. That means eating moderately. No, once you break your fast, I said you can eat. No, no, not as much as he. I'm not saying being gluttonous or go have or, but, but you can eat as, 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 which what's what you enjoy after you break your fast. All the way up to the time when it's time to stop. Yeah. Hold on. Mm-mm. Same. There is no kafara. There, there's no kafara. No. It has to enter. It has to be what they call ilaj. Ilaj is when the private parts meet. When they meet, there's a kafara. Is it clear? Tfadna. There is no sunnah during the travels. There is no narration of the message of Allah prayed the sunnah while he was traveling except the two rakats for fajr and witr. That's it. So but the message of Allah while he was traveling, he never prayed any of the sunnah. It Lama Kisafra Rasulullah Sallam Lam Yakun you sali nawafil fi asfari. Illa rakat il fajr wal witr. Fakat. That's it. It was just witr. And Raka'at al Fajr. As for the Sunnah while he was traveling, never did it. Jay? Is it clear? I thought we'll stop here. Hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi. Subhanaka Allah wa bihamdak. Shalwala ilahi la anta stafrika wa tubi ilayhi.